So then the writer said, yeah, Pan's just going to be uh, a uh, damsel in distress for every episode, and also Goku's going to get her out of trouble. Ha, ha, ha. Oh, hi. Sorry, I didn't see you there. I was just reading my uh, book review on why Dragon Ball GT didn't turn out as well as everyone expected. Uh, it's a very interesting read. It's like, it went from like 0 to 100. It's kind of wild. Anyway, what's going on, boys? Uh, Bob here. Welcome back to a new Let's Play. Oh, boy. It's been a little bit since I actually started one of these since... GNT special like several months ago. It's kind of wild. All right, so what is up? It's time for a new Dragon Ball Let's Play. I should probably put these on break at some point. It's, we've been going with a lot of them back to back. That's fine. That's what next time it's for. So if you're not aware exactly, the reason I'm doing this is because this is a thank you guys to you guys for helping me reach 200 followers on Twitch. Now, of course, we're a little bit above that now. It's been a little bit, but again, I just want to extend my appreciation. Now, before we begin pro formally, I would like to reiterate again that currently we are on the road to getting to 250 followers on Twitch. And as soon as we do, gonna let's play this little baby. Dragon Ball Z Extreme Butoden on the 3DS. Uh, if you're wondering why this is a milestone, it's because, well, this is going to be very fun. And also, I need a lot of time to practice for this one because there's a lot of unique characters, a lot of unique combo routes. I need the work. And also, once we pass that, some further ones down the line. 300, we're going to do the entire Ninja Destiny series. That's going to be extremely fun on the DS. Uh, 400, we're going to do the original uh, Melty Blood uh, game on PC. And 500, I was thinking about doing a, a redo of the old BT3 Let's Play, but I'm like, you know, no. Let's do that one uh, BT4 mod that was done by the guys in South America and uh, cover that. That's because it got English translated. That would be pretty cool at least i believe it would be so today's subject matter that's not the right window this is the right window but nothing showing because well emulation stuff there we go so dragon ball gt transformation is going to just be kind of a dim screen bear with me for a minute so this is a very fascinating game first of all this is a game i have actually not practiced whatsoever or play whatsoever until the recent practice streams because even though i own the game i've never had a reason to actually pop it in because well couple reasons uh this was released on august 9th 2005 for the game boy advance which actually would make it one of the later game boy advance games to be released because the ds came out in 2000 actually i think in 2004 now i think about it i was thinking 2005 version of my note taking weird uh also created by webfoot technologies if you're familiar with webfoot yeah i can't talk right now webfoot sorry it's a little late um, they are the same get developers as the Legacy of Goku franchise and Taiketsu. That last one not, might not be as important. The Legacy of Goku one is definitely the more highlight of this. A lot of the trappings can be found in this. It uses a lot of the bit crush music from the anime, um, as well as a lot of uh, unique things that they decided to toss in. Although I'm recognizing more things since I rewatched GT a little bit. Uh, I never actually, oh, that's right, my notes. This is also a beat em up game, which is actually a heavy departure from what you usually get with Dragon Ball Z games in general. Like, usually you go one of two routes. You go with fighting game or you go with RPG. And this one more skews much more like towards like a Street of Raid kind of thing. It's kind of wild. And I'm going to be completely honest here. I am a complete fucking amateur when it comes to 2D side scroll beat em ups. Like, a lot of people may have grown up with like, I don't know, Golden Axe or Street of Raids. Me? Ah, uh, not me, ba not me, baby. <laughs> I have actually am a complete scrub when it comes to this, so I'm not going to uh, pretend uh, I am really good at this. So uh, yeah, I had to actually do a little bit of research. Also, first last time we're do I'm doing that's in full complete 2K. Uh, you know the resolution 1440p. Um, that was one of my New Year's resolutions, and we have gone out working for the most part. And I gotta say, this is an interesting thing because 2K recording means that one things will be prettier. But two, the things that are not pretty to look at are going to be even less pretty to look at. And they're going to be way, way more obvious. You know, a <laughs> game that was originally made for like a what? 160 by 160 screen being blown up to 2K? What could go wrong? Uh, literally, what could go wrong with that? I see absolutely nothing wrong here. Let's just go ahead and fire this boy up. And yes, we are jumping straight in with get with the end of the Grand Tour. Seven of the Grand Tour. Dragon Ball GT. Also, maybe we'll adjust volume a little bit. I could probably raise a little bit in OBS. There we go. All right, so as you can definitely see, um, yeah, the the graphics. Um, I'm not doing a frame blend, frame blending uh, or pixel blending. I'm not a believer in that. Also, 
I would like to say also one quick shout out really fast. Uh, a big shout out and thank you to the YouTuber Delta Rod. Um, he has helped me time to see every pixel. Dude, I can like some of these pixels on my 2K ultra wide monitor are literally like almost the size of my fucking like pinky uh, fingernails. It's wild. Okay. Fuck some raw pixel every time. Yeah, dude, just got a no protection for a pixel whatsoever. My <laughs> my monitor pulls out, but my pixels don't. I just made that one up. Oh my god. Anyway, so no, a big shout out to and thank you to Delta Rod. He has helped me extensively with setting this game up. He's done his whole uh, his own let's play of GT over on his channel, and he's been a huge uh, help with getting this running. Uh, I learned that apparently Visual Boy Advance trips the anti piracy of transformation. I've never had this happen before. It's so bizarre. Like, yeah, using Visual Boy Advance, like every time we go to New World, like we'd have an anti piracy screen come up. Like, um, what? <laughs> so I guess it turns out um, MGBA is uh, an emulator that's kind of overtaking VBA in terms of popularity and usefulness. Kind of wild. I guess I can't complain too much as long as it works. It's just kind of weird. You know, I'm just so used to Visual Boy Advance being like the king of, of Game Boy Advance emulators from like 2008 onwards. Anyway, so besides that, let's go ahead and cover the story a little bit, shall we? Now, yes, I've already done, done a full uh, playthrough of this game before as a practice. This is going to be a very interesting game. Start a new game. I'm going to wipe out my save data. Oh no, I'm missing so much. Don't worry. We keep our app. My, it's like a master save file and the story mode is like a sub thing. We're just losing overall. Um, these fire beats, ah, they're okay. All right, so basically we're kind of beginning this with um, the actual start of Dragon Ball GT. So GT transformation basically covers from the start of GT up until the end of the baby arc, and that does mostly consider, or sorry, does mostly consist of the Black Star Dragon Ball arc. Now I realize in hindsight that I actually don't get to talk about GT a lot in my modern Let's Plays. Look at look at that thick. Fucking red sausage. Oh, I love him so much. I actually is a little uh, pudgy in this, isn't he? Right weird. All right, so where do we even begin? So I guess um, somewhere, uh, fucking on his back patio somewhere, Kami had an actual like separate pair of Dragon Balls he was just kind of keeping around and when used will blow up the earth in a year because of the negative energy when you use them? Yeah, there's a lot to take in with that. Like, uh, why wouldn't they disappear when Kami fused back into Piccolo? Uh, why did he bother to keep these lying around? Also, hey, got some monkey's paw going on. Literal monkey's paw. If you don't know what that uh, uh, term is, you know, be careful what you wish for. Uh, literally, Pilaf went to the top of Kami's lookout in order to make a wish on Dragon Balls to, I don't know, get power or fame or power. I don't know. Also, how do you know that uh, about the, the the lookout and where the Dragon Balls were on there? I I don't know, man. Anyway, so some very funny things. Does it mean I have to go back to school? Which is funny because if my memory serves me, he didn't actually go to school. I mean, it's still kind of a funny line. I'm gonna th assume this might be a dubism, but you know, it's whatever. Uh, what a Dragon Ball turn burning. What? <laughs> Alex, I have the term. I don't know what that, that or that's a reference. I don't know what it is. Anyway, so yeah, just kind of really weird. Also, uh, Dende didn't know that they were sitting back there in that quote mausoleum. There would have been really that well hidden. Anyway, so at some point, also King Kai was doing a little bit of research. How he did research with nothing else to go on, I have no idea. Um. Also, hello, GT Bulma. I, I will say her first. When you first see her in GT, okay, I'll say her design's a little bit cute with like the weird uh under buzz cut. It's kind of odd. Like it, that might sound weird, especially for like 90s, but no. I was a hell of a pan. So I'm gonna completely square with you guys. I have been rewatching a little bit of G. I tried rewatching the Black Star Dragon Ball arc for this let's play. I got about six episodes in. I could not do it. Uh, and I will just say also that while I pan definitely does get better later on because I've watched More than enough GT when I was a kid also and I remember I, was, I remember most of the rest of it off the top of my head I didn't I only watched a lot of episodes like one time and that's it and boy she is Way worse than I was expecting like it's actually kind of impressive 
So the joke at the start of Let's Play was a reference to how the animators, or sorry, storyboards are literally like, yeah, Pan is basically here as a plot device to move the story forward. She's a damsel in distress, constantly gets into the trouble. Goku has to save her ass. Something hit us? Wait, one of our stabilizers rockets fell off? Is that what that was? They were actually clarifying the show what the hell fell off the, the, the thing. And we're starting in Emeka. Sorry, I've been going a million miles per hour. I've not actually looked at chat in a minute. What's going on with you guys? <clears throat> Let's see. People have to make us a child again. Oh, wait a minute. Alex is saying lyrics to, the, to uh, Step in the Grand Tour. I did not. Uh, th that, some of them are a bit of a jumble. Payoff wish was to make him and his gang return to young again. That wouldn't really do much for them. It sounded like they want something a little more grand scale than that, but you know, whatever. Anyway, starring on Emeka. And it's funny when I got to this. Okay, maybe, I don't know if some of you remember this whatsoever. So, first of all, yes, the overall structure of the story is that they're hopping planet to planet in order to find the Black Star Dragon Balls and get them before the Earth blows up. Could probably have gotten them in the space without needing all the super stipulations regardless, but you know, whatever. Arachnid <laughs> Phobos, wait, what? Oh yeah, ah! Uh, I'm more comedic, I don't think that's gonna trigger anyone's arachnophobia. I would know, I have it. Anyway, hi Giru. Okay. Where do we begin? So, I guess I'll start with this. Um, I'm pretty sure the denizens of Emeka are actually uh, just uh, stereotypes of gypsies. Okay, B bear with me. I was going back and forth like, are they Jew stereotypes or are are they um, gypsies? So, accent, uh, the the general nature like of the show, uh, they're, they were being called swindlers. Yeah, I, I get the feeling they were, that's, those are typically, um, stereotypes of gypsies. But, I'm not totally sure one way or the other. It's just kind of really fucking funny that, the 90s were a weird time. Also, shout out to, uh, Goku's, uh, little boy penis literally being in the intro for Dragon Ball GT on the Japanese side. Did not know that. And I just kind of see it, I'm like, huh, that's a thing. Oh, Brandon typed something in the chat from behind me. It's something you miss. Uh, you should know it's because it's still on that GT era. It's mistranslated. It wasn't 10 years after the D was 5. Oh, that oh, okay. Yeah, they were really hammering the 10 years part. Which means the pan you see dressed in a slut is 9, not 14. Oh, boy. Which neither is good by stretch. Yeah. Um, I No, I'm going to fully agree. Um, Both are bad, but 9 is significantly worse. I think also Nigel pointed... It was either Nigel or Kurt in my anime chat that pointed out that, yeah, there's a lot of ass shots of Pan also and a, like a lot of weird sexualization going on. The 90s were weird, were fuck, you know, I, I wouldn't even say 90s. Japan in general, like back then, was a bit of a weird creature, huh? To also mention, Toriyama wasn't told the age for Pan or bro. Wait. <laughs> Wait, excuse me, really? I think I missed that. Japan school kids. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. You, you, unfortunately, that is kind of the nature of the beast. Oh, I got this first boss. Oh, but can't get past him. There we go. <laughs> All right, so I should probably, actually probably start explaining the, the controls of this game a little bit. So first of all, if you're remotely familiar with uh, 2.5D games, uh, or sorry, 2.5, I wish it was like that. If you're at all familiar with like Golden Axe or Street to Rage or something like that, you're gonna find a lot of like similar things to the scene where a deer tries to breastfeed from Pan. I only wish I was joking. I can top that a little bit. Literally, first episode, uh, let's see, episode, episode two or three, they blast off into space. Trunks trying to, their episode to start. Trunks is trying to get a critical piece, uh, thing back from Pan. Pan literally stuffs it into her shirt and is like daring Trunks to like fondle her to get it back. Like, bro? Okay. And. It's all more awkward for me because when I was literally 10 years old, like, yeah, I'll say I thought Pan was cute, but like, d d d hindsight being what it is, it's like, oh, Jesus Christ, okay. Anyway, let's actually cover this game a little bit, shall we? There we go, we can charge. Toriyama just was just asked to do a sketch up for Ra and Pan. It was told a little bit nothing of their teenagers. Oh boy. All right, so basic stuff for this game in terms of the controls. I actually do have a section about this. I should scroll down to my, my notes. That's the thing about Let's Plays. You want to write down notes in advance so you know what to actually, we'll actually talk about sometimes. All right, so basically, B is melee, A is jump. 
you can, what you can do is hold A while in the air to just gently float down like this. It's great for like positioning and like micro adjustments. It's really good. Uh, double tap forward or back in order to uh, dash. I don't like using it because like dashing has a lot of cooldown. Like as you can see, um, here I'm gonna like dash forward and literally immediately hold the other way. It takes a little bit to actually recover from it. It's kind of really annoying actually. Come on, come on, boys. All right, these are also gonna spit out turrets. There's some dudes in here who actually are just running straight up shotguns, by the way. Like, look at that. <laughs> this is actually kind of... Maybe I'm just so used to Yu-Gi-Oh right now, but like, that actually did kind of calm me off a little, a little bit uh, when I first saw them. Like, oh yeah, right, Dragon Ball, duh. All right. Other things. Uh, R button shoots basic key blast. It can be pretty good. Uh, it does consume your, uh, your key bar, obviously, but it's pretty good for like just basic stuff, you know? Oh, let's go over here. I like to drop a beam meal on this, so I lure some guys over and just immediately pop it. Hey, it sounds to be nice. All right. Whoop. Also, I'm going to stick to Goku generally for this first level until we get to the boss, in which case I'm going to break out Pan and show why she is absolutely fucking broken in this game. I also like to mention that we are playing this on medium difficulty, and I'm glad I'm actually doing all right here. I had some severe doubts about this. Trunks is CEO, which means uh, different things than US and Japan. Yeah, it definitely kind of seems like it. If I don't know, it definitely gives it like different vibes. Like Trunks, when he's sitting as a CEO in that position, like it didn't really seem like he had any real power. He seemed like almost he was more subservient to like the machine than anything else, which is wild considering what CEOs are like these days. I I would like a futuristic society where CEOs actually have pretty much equivalent power to an actual like regular grunt worker that'd be base as hell how are you goons so they impounded the ship which is certainly something also this is very funny these two didn't even get this much interaction in the show itself watch this and that's about all she wrote <laughs> literally okay they actually continue down so l is the charge r is key blast uh, if you do R plus B, you'll actually uh, rip a giant beam like that. Uh, let me, let me uh, get lined this up. One thing that does suck, however, is that you cannot hold, you can't, you don't have a guard button. And I kind of wish you could do that. I'm going to be straight up with my opinions right now. I, there's a lot of things that irk me about this game. In fact, this might be my second least liked, um, that was weird. This might be the, my second least uh, enjoyed um, Game Boy Advance game uh, from Webfoot because while it's not Taiketsu bad, there's a lot of hitbox and collision issues that I just see across the board, and it's really take like really takes the wind out of my sails a little bit. All right, but anyway, so you uh, bash B button, you get your basic combo out. Uh, if you sometimes if you're holding the D pad in a certain direction near an enemy, you can actually pick them up. Uh, I don't know what the rules for this exactly are. That's kind of cool. And also, when you're holding them, you can uh, press. The, you can either press the head button again to throw them, or you can press the R button to do a unique uh, damaging uh, thing to them. Kind of cool. Trunks reminds me a lot what Broly does, and I find it to be extremely funny. <clears throat> Excuse me. Legacy of God will never get. Okay, Legacy of Goku two and Boost Fury are, uh, I guess, as the kids say, goaded. So I will never say anything about bad about them except for Legacy of Goku two's difficulty spikes. That's about it. Legacy one, yeah, no. Although it's funny because I've occasionally been thinking about maybe going back to revisit the game since it was literally like what my third let's play on this channel overall. It was very early on. Bob the Trunks uses sword in the GG episodes you watch. I don't remember him ever using it. All right, let me get a swig of water really fast and explain this one. Nope. All right, let me explain this one a little bit. So yes, what you are seeing is Trunks <laughs> also a big ass watermelon. Thanks, game. So yes, what you are seeing is Trunks does in fact have his his Z sword. Yes, I'm using that term. Oh wait, no, it's not the Z sword. That's a different thing entirely. Never mind. Uh, Bob's canceled for being a Dragon Ball Z fan. So, no, he does in fact have his sword as uh, part of his attacks. Now, obviously, this is a web foot thing. Uh, it's just a little something to make Trunks a little more visually unique from the rest of, from the rest of the cast. Now, of course, this is where things get a little bit funky because if you remember anything about 
this show overall, Trunk should not have the sword because of the sword that in was inherited from Tapion. Uh, well, actually, wait, no, actually, this wanna be. Okay, wait, no. Okay, so if we do count Wrath of the Dragon as canon, then if that, if he did, Trunks could theoretically have Tapion's sword. Obviously, he never uses it once at all. That is a good point. So you guys can't hear Bran because he's, there's a heavy audio filter going on. But he did make mention that movie villains do make an appearance in GT later on. One specific instance I can think of is cooler pops up on TV when they're, everyone's escaping from hell. I think Bojack makes an appearance too, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Bojack is, is one right. Uh, Salsa is also there too. Yeah. <laughs> Trunks is still glowing with invincibility. That's hilarious. All right. Also, this man is a corrupt king, taxing the hell out of the poor. I feel like there is something to be had there if I were looking to gypsy history, but I'm not about to look dig that because that would take a while. And here we have easily the. I'm gonna be real. This is the most interesting character of this entire fucking arc. Uh, Logic. It's his fight's like three minutes long, so that's incredibly annoying. But like, he's such a cool character. He's such a cool design. I mean, he's basically PyCon without being PyCon, but like, I don't care. Like, he acts cool. He's actually kind of fits into this world pretty well. He's he's an actual fight for Goku in this time period, which is rare if it's not General Rildo. So, fuck me. I'm not going to complain whatsoever. Also, yeah, I think someone made mention of, like, hit, like his one attack he does is that one uppercut. He does the Goku. That's very funny. All right. Also, one thing I should mention. Yeah, um... No, no one goes Super Saiyan in this game at all, outside of like actual costumes or like, uh, yeah, purchasable costumes in game. To avoid giving people an aneurysm, yes, uh, purchasable in game, not DLC. Uh, obviously, I feel like with this generation more and more, I have to uh, make clear that yes, no, there is no DLC in this game. This that was in the before times. <laughs> oh god, I don't like the PS3 generation sometimes. It sets some bad precedents for th this uh, gaming industry. Oh, um, I'm, I'm uh, harping on the PS2 generation a little bit because of the tr microtransaction uh, meme that came, well, meme trend that came out of it. All right, so also we made out the plan. Uh, Mark, uh, totally not Mark, did make mention also there's a lot of um, Star Wars references in this uh, arc as well. And you can definitely see them as we go forward. Even just a casual glance at Giru, it's like, yeah, R2, duh. Like, <laughs> that's pretty evident. Also, um, crash landing on a desert planet, having to repair it. That's a Star Wars episode. Uh, what ep no, episode one came on 96, I think. Bit a little bit. <laughs> Giru time. I still don't hate Giru. I actually don't mind Giru whatsoever, honestly. He's a pretty decent character that gets better later on. I don't mind him. Pan, however, does kind of make Lost Episodes a bit of a um, slog to get through, not gonna lie. Oh yeah, also one other thing. This game gives you so little zenny. <laughs> like every mission you might get maybe 100 zenny out of it. And some co some characters to purchase are like two to 4,000. I barely managed to buy Oob my first run through of this game. It was really annoying. He's like 2,000. Ugh. 